attendance assignment. Whoops. Or I'm going to post the attendance assignment soon. Just give me a second. Um, I think we'll wait a few minutes for people to start uh, joining and all, but yeah, I'll post the attendance assignment right now, if I can find it. Uh, do the attendance on that and I think we'll get started in a few minutes So I'll just send that link again. Just make sure to do the attendance, and if you don't have the link, just ask in chat for it, and then I'll resend it. So let's get started then. Um, today we're going to be covering pandas because okay, so up till now we've covered basic Python and NumPy. So at the start of the new year, we're going to start working with Pandas. So um, Pandas is a Python library, of course, that allows you to work with large amounts of data very efficiently, pretty much. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's really useful for machine learning because machine learning requires a lot of data, you know, so you're going to be using this a lot. 
So meeting a oh I need to rename this. Okay. So um I've already downloaded a CSV from the election what two months ago now? Yeah, just for fun. Uh a good website for downloading CSVs is called Kaggle.com or just uh Kaggle. So um yeah, this is a pretty great database to just look for different data sets if you're doing any projects or anything like that. So yeah, um, this is where I found that data set and I got this specific CSV file within that data set. All right, so let's start. Um, let's make a new Python 3 file and let's call it and this lesson why not okay so first thing is import pandas as PD so and numpy has its abbreviation its common abbreviation that's NB and pandas has the same thing so that's PD oh and before I forget you do need to check if you don't you might not have pandas installed so uh, to just install it you can do pip install pandas basically and if I do that requirement already satisfied because I already have it installed so just import pandas as PD so uh, first we will be covering pandas series uh, so a pandas series sorry so this is pretty simple let's go PD dot series let's go six And now we can use another example of a series where you can input a list or sorry, an array within it. So you can go five, four, seven. My God, the spacing's horrible here. Okay, five, four, six, three. So that is our series. This is the index and this is the value associated with the index and this here is the type of the array or like the type of the values within the array. So um, yeah so this first one only had one index and that was six so index zero because remember computers start counting from zero not one. and. This one has four indices, so it goes zero, one, two, three, and that's five, four, six, three. So yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. But here is something that's different uh, that you might might be a bit surprising. So you know how these indices are zero, one, two, and three, right? That's how all indices are, right? Well, no. You can actually change the indices to be whatever you want. So let's say, um, okay, p dot, oh, not pd dot series. Now, one of these parameters within the pd dot series uh, method, so 5432, that's a pretty simple thing. So we've inputted that array, and now we can do index, and we can input another array to define what the indices of this array are going to be. This pandas, not this array, not this array. <laughs> we can define what the indices of the series are going to be. Get the names mixed up. So let's say I want the index to start from one. Yeah. So here you go. Instead of starting from zero, it starts from one. So that's a bit confusing. So uh, instead, let's make it start from a. And go up from there. A, B, C, D. Oh no, I do have to put quotations around it. I forgot about that. Okay. There we go. So A, B, uh, C, and D are now the indices. So, um, yeah, you can just. All right. Well. Yeah, now, now you can uh, find a specific indice by just 
doing this so say I have this copied here and I want to look at look at it at the index of C and that's 3 if you look over here so um, this can also be done if you say uh, s is equal to p dot series, and then you print s. Oh God, what was that? There we go. That's same thing right here, and you print s at the index of c. Yeah. So these two um, block six and nine do the exact same thing. It's if you want to write it all in one line, then you probably want to do this, but this is uh, defining it as a variable is probably smarter. But yeah, anyway, um, yeah. So you can also um, index it in another way where say we've already defined s as a series, so you can say s dot c. Oh no, not a dot c. Whoopsies, s dot c. That's three, but um, there is a specific condition for that to work, and it's only when there are no spaces within the index. So these are just characters, so it works there. Just singular characters for each index. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean, even if we did a little something more complicated, like apple, we could do s dot apple. Oh. Does that not work? Wait, Rahi, can it only be one character for the dot indexing? Okay, yeah, I, I think we're just gonna assume it's gonna be only one. Oh, did I not? Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh wait. <laughs> okay, yeah, that that's true. All right. Well, yeah, so that's Apple. I'm probably going to change it back because this is simpler. Oh, my God. All right. Yeah, but good reminder to always run all your cells when you make a change. Yeah. Um, you can also, uh, so we learned about slicing with NumPy and the normal Python arrays. And surprise, surprise, you can do the same here. So uh, I think I'll do make another series one that's simpler uh, just one two three four five just this uh, so we print s here you go we have the indices so we print s from indices 0 to okay well from indices 2 to 3 or I don't know 1 to 3 yeah that's just the first two indices um, we can, um, like, like with the NumPy array slicing and the normal array slicing, if you leave one part of it blank, then it's just going to assume that it's from the beginning. So here you go. Same applies for when you do it to the other side of the array. Here you go. Okay. That's simple enough. Um, so yeah, now we're going to go into data frames. So data frames are basically an array of series yeah so um, we use those for uh, processing our CSV files so these are our CSV files I don't remember exactly what CSV stands for but it does mean like separated by a comma so each of these data values are separated by a comma and that's how the computer just like Pardon. Yeah. Oh, that that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. So these are comma separated values, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, that's all. CSV is just different data values separated by commas that a computer can easily parse through. And yeah. Um. All right. So we can just create. Okay. Um. So you can create a data frame by creating a dictionary with uh, with two series, well, with not two series, but the series as the value. So let's say one uh, corresponds to p 
p.siri oh guys okay um I don't know where should it be one two three let's say it's that and then two corresponds to the pd dot series four five six um i did something wrong didn't I? oh no yeah you have to add your brackets that's my bad so this isn't um the individual values of the series aren't parameters the array itself is the parameter you have to this is all just one parameter it's not one two and three that are separate parameters but yeah here's the series so yeah um i think there is a df dot what is it there's an easy way to show it huh dot head no wait yeah df dot head no No, I don't think that. Okay, wait. Yeah, this is just a dictionary. But yeah, no, it's not. Or is it pd dot head, and then you do? Oh well. Okay, well, I'll show this later. Um. So. Yeah, you could also. Oh no! Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to define it. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Okay, so we'll just put this as d. Oh, what, what did I do there? Okay, put this as D, and then we'll say df is equal to pd.dataframe, which creates a data frame from this dictionary. So here you go, yeah. Now you can do df.head. Yeah, there we go. And that's the, um, that's the head of the array. Uh, is it? I mean, you could, oh, well, I mean, it works either way. This is just nicer formatting. Um, yeah. I think there's df.display as well. Uh, no. Huh, okay, well, I remember something. Ah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so yeah, there's that. Um, so let's redefine df. We can do, uh, we can specify the index and the columns that we want within the initialization of the data frame. So we can say PD dot data frame. Uh, we could put D, but we can also put the indexes or the indices, not index. And uh, I don't know, we can do it like A, B, uh, just that and we can also put columns so um, these are the indices we're talking about and these are the columns so we need two indices uh, oh index is equal to yeah so these this is a value this is a parameter within the data frame uh, function or data from method sorry and you're just assigning this value to that parameter um so yeah now we could just do d e so print df yeah it's yeah so notice how the indices are a b and c and the columns at the top are D and E, like we said. All right. So um, you were probably wondering why I showed you this if you have to define data frames like this. Well, surprise, you don't need to define data frames by making a dictionary manually and inputting it with it, yeah, inputting it in there. So all you need to do, actually, uh, Pandas has a pretty neat function for this, and it's called read C uh, CSV, which I just showed you the CSV we're going to be working with. So um, let's call it votes. Yeah, it's equal to pd.read 
csv and then we put the name in I think it says it right yeah if you double press tab it'll do it for you so here we are and yeah that is our red CSV and I think I think you need to do DF is equal to PD dot data frame with this oh it will oh you're right that's cool oh no that's nice yeah so yeah there we go now we need we can do DF dot head and that gives a small taste of what the data set actually is, if you want to talk about it in simpler terms. So yeah, uh, there's that. Um, so now let's, let's try working with this. Let's try using what we learned above here. And um, yeah, so df, let's say state, I don't know. How do you wait? Hold up. Let me see this. It's been a while. Uh, okay. Actually, wait. No, we should go with the. We should go into this later. Hold up. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now we should go into basic operations before we go into indexing. Yeah. I'm going a bit out of order. Uh, so yeah, first um, we can look at how much, uh, how many values there are per specific, you know, thing. So we could say how many. Let's see, print df dot state value. I think it's value counts. There we go. So we can see how many states there are and which states there are. Here. So surprise, surprise, there are 50 of them. Uh, yeah. And I think this puts the total votes with it. I'm not sure. No, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is the value count. Yeah, but this is kind of low, right? It's really low. Uh, huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is by county. So this is the first county that comes up. And they're saying the votes for that. I mean, if you look at Delaware, well, I mean, yeah. So yeah, this is basically telling you the value counts of these of all the states you can do this with actually with Canada I think it's gonna work better maybe um, print df dot candidate is it candidate yeah value count Did I do something oh value counts whoops yes wow how many okay well Interesting. Yeah. Oh, nice. Kanye West is on here. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you can also sort the values. Oh, actually, yeah. So this is already doing it in ascending order. So, but I could do ascending equals... Oh no, this is doing it in dis descending order. Okay, my bad. So if you wanted to do ascending is equal to true. Oh my god. Yep, there we go. So now it's going from the lowest back all the way to the highest. Yeah. Um, there we go. Now you can. Whoops. Here. You can sort the values, which. Um, yeah. Um, sort the values within these the 
data frame. So we could say candidate. Is it candidate? Okay, yeah. Dot sort ascending is equal to true. Oh yeah, df dot candidate. There we go. Oh, sort values. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, so this is sorting all the values. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> well, yeah. It's a, it's a bit of a strange data set. I don't think it's organized too well. There was a... This was one of the data sets within the file. I think I could have gone with the state... Uh, the one that went per candidate and the total votes the smaller data set I think that would have been a better example but uh, it's okay yeah um, yeah so you can sort the values by a specific um, you know value because total part total votes is the default one but uh, you could just say one like by is equal to one. Oh no. Yeah. I need to put that in quotes. Wait. Are you sure it's sort by? Wait. Yeah, okay, well, um, yeah, so this is all the candidates from ascending values for their total votes. All right, um, ah, there we go. Yes, so you can sort the data frame by mul with multiple features, or, yeah. You could say by is equal to one I think oh no I don't think you can sort by um, what do you call it a boolean number that one makes sense yeah so if we do it by total votes it should work wait oh oh do I need to okay okay I see Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, so now it's sorting by total votes. So, yeah, yeah, I, I see my mistake, yeah. If you sort it by who won, then it shows, yeah. It's not that useful. Yeah, this one isn't too useful. But, yeah, you can do that as well. But total votes is probably the one you're most likely going to be doing. So, yeah, there, there's that. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah. Uh, you can also like uh, similarly with numpy arrays. Actually, uh, this is pretty important to specify. But pandas is actually based upon numpy, if I recall correctly. So there's a lot of things that will carry over from the stuff we've learned in numpy. So like, yeah, we've gone over a few of the things that carry over. This is another one. Um, well, actually, this is the attribute of normal arrays, but still, a lot of things do carry over. So you can say, uh, you can say print df dot candidate, and oh no, dot one. So let's say is equal to true. So print whoever won. Wait, no. Oh, no, 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 no. You need to do df and then encompass that. Okay, yeah, there we go. So this is only showing the votes of the candidate who won. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Jupyter Notebook is useful, but yeah, there we go. Pretty useful, but I need to 
remember to actually use it. Okay, um, so yeah, that, but that's, this is a, wait, what? Oh, this is winning the county. Okay, that makes sense. All right. <laughs> that was straight. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that makes sense. So these are all the counties that were won by each candidate. Um, let's see. Yeah. So you can, this is basically indexing the data frame. You're only accessing a certain values. Like, look, you're setting aside uh, indexes one, two, and three. And just, yeah, you're just only taking the values that meet this Boolean. Yeah, so it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's useful. It's very useful later on. Um, yeah. So let's look at this. Um, let's just print or no, nah, not print. Sorry. Okay. So which county are we? Okay, DF, and then we can say DF dot county. My God. DF dot county, and then we can say. Let's see what comes up. Iowa. How many Dallas counties are there? Okay, well, yeah, so <laughs> here's our, uh, yeah, so we can also do multiple uh, conditions, Boolean conditions. So we could say df.state is equal to, not equals, 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 Texas. So there we go. That's all the votes from our state and our county. Is it not? Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that works too. Oh, is it? Okay. It's just, all right. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I think it's supposed to be like, wait, what does it say when it's giving that message? Hold up. Boolean series key will be re-indexed to match data frame index. DF. I don't know. This one works. That's strange. I do one, it says cannot perform RAND with D. No, no, no. This is unsupported operate operand type for bool and string. What? But huh? That's that's strange. It's supposed to be two booleans, right? Oh, okay, that makes sense. All right. Um. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. No message. Yeah, so you can you can do it either way, but this is probably more correct. But <laughs> anyways, yeah. So ah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So this is uh the other way works as well, but this is more useful if you want to do more than just a simple and. All right. So um yeah uh. We can also set index, so let's do set index. So we have all these indices. Um, so we can set the index as, what do we call it? One. So that means that this one value is going to be the index. That's actually probably not a good idea because there's only two possible indices, but yeah, let's let's not do that. Uh, I'll just put total. I'll index it by candidate. There we go. Yeah, so now it's indexed by the candidate and the number of votes they got. So that yeah, there's that. Um, or 
like Rahi said, you can remove the print statement if you want to see the whole thing. So, yeah, now it's formatted nicer. So now, yeah, there's that. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, ten minutes left. So I'm gonna wrap up slowly. Um, we're getting close to the end of this anyway. So. So there's that. Um, yeah. uh, there's not much else to indexing the um, data frame. You could reset index so if you want it to go back to normal. Place. And then, oh. There we go. Yeah, and now it's indexed normally again, unlike this one. So yeah, um, there's not much more to go to, go into at this point. So uh, now talk about sorting the index. So oh, also this in place means I think it means um, the values within the DF uh, data frame are going to be changed. And it's not going to be like a completely new data frame, right? I'm thinking of the right thing, right? Oh, okay. yeah, cool. So yeah, um, so if I wanted to do this, I could say df1 is equal to this. So this would probably give me an error if I tried. Oh, well. Oh, this is probably going to change the if input. Yeah, but I'm trying to assign that copy to DF1. Oh, well, yeah. Cannot insert level zero already exist. Let me see. Choose a free different kind of error. Data frame. Um. Oh, do do what? Oh, just like without any arguments. Uh, yeah, this is just what happens. Is it? Oh, I think I already read. Okay, well, yeah. So I need to. If I didn't reset that, yeah. So let me set index to candidate. So in place is equal to false. No. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it's okay. Um. Yeah, I could just df dot reset index in place is equal to true. We're not. Yeah. What? So I set the index as candidate by doing something. Okay, wait. So what happens if I print df right now? Okay, well the index is already reset. Er, does this not doing anything? This not doing anything? Huh? That's weird. Oh, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, so that, yeah, yeah. So you could either do this, so that's actually really important. So in place needs to be true here as well, because I want to change DF. So I can say, I can print DF as well. Or, what did I do? None of the... Oh, okay, well, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I just reset it, and there's that. So if I do this again, print df. Okay, 
uh, candidates are the index. Okay. Then df dot reset index in place is equal to true. There we go. Print df again. There we go. Back to normal. So that that took a little longer than it should have, but there we are. Um. So yeah. Now, uh, let's let's talk about lock and I lock. Now, um. So, locate lock stands for location, I would imagine, and I lock is integer location. I this is a guess, but judging by what they do, it I, I think that's probably it. So, um, yeah. So we can set the index for actually, yeah. We we can set the index to the number of votes. Yeah, we can call it total votes. There we go. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. In place is equal to true. Let's not forget that. So yeah, now the change actually happens within DF and it's not just self-contained here. So um yeah, now that we have that, uh so we can find print the or not print. You don't really need to use print in uh, Jupyter notebooks because it formats it all for you, like Rahi said before. So that's pretty useful. Uh, you could say df dot loc uh, location what three two one seven two. Well, that's Location all. What is it saying? Oh, okay. You need to specify. You need to say df dot. Um, just say county. Let's go with counties for this one. So here are all the Dallas counties that there are, just surprisingly a lot of them. Um, yeah, so this is just finding the location. And yeah, so what I was trying to do before, that one you should do with iLoc, or iLocation, or I don't know how to say it. It's I-L-O-C. So um, I wanted to find which counties got, what, eight? Two eight six nine nine votes. How do you say this? Yeah, just here. So yeah. So Brian Carroll got two eight six nine nine votes in Dallas County, Arkansas. I just copied that off here, but yeah. And you can do that for multiple things. So I can say two eight six nine nine. Uh, two eight six nine six, and I'm just doing these numbers because, um, I know I'm gonna get something. I just don't want to do like random numbers, and like find anything. Just for the sake of example, what did I? Uh, oh yeah. So you need to have it needs to be in its own array here. So there we go. There it is. So Brian Carroll, Phil Collins, and Kanye West. So that's nice. Um, yeah. We can also index it that way. The indexing is going to be kind of weird, but you can say people who got total votes from what two six. I don't know how is this. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of weird, but people who got two six sixty votes to two, I don't know, three thousand votes. Does that know how you do it? Oh, I don't think you put it in here. There we go. Yeah. So these are 
all the candidates that got the number of votes that fall within that spectrum. Yeah, so that's great. Um, so, oh wow, I think we're out of time for today. So, next lesson, Rahi will be teaching, and we'll go over. Uh, we'll finish this NumPy or not NumPy. Sorry, we'll finish this pandas lesson by going over group by, and that yeah. So yeah, we'll just finish up this this lesson and move on to the next pandas lesson. We'll probably finish pandas by next week and start working on the matplotlib afterwards. So yeah, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in to our stream today. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Uh,